There's a video on YouTube called Image Trace Function in NewScale 5 that unfortunately contains a number of inaccuracies and misleading information. This concerns me because I saw this video posted on a Facebook group as a resource for learning how to trace in SCAL 5 and it's not that at all. I don't mean to disparage the creator of this video, I just feel it's very important for those who own SCAL to get factual information about functions in the software. So I'm going to use the same image from that video and I'm going to point out corrections that I noted as I was watching that video. Alright, getting started. Number one, the basic trace function in SCAL 5 hasn't been greatly improved over SCAL 4. There are certainly new settings one can use to improve a trace, but if you use the exact same settings in SCAL 5 that you used in SCAL 4, you'll get the same trace results. And let me show you an example. For example, this is the, the image again, and I've traced it already um, in SCAL 5, and let's have a look at how many nodes I got as a result of this trace. If I go to Path Simplify, you'll see that the total nodes is 1,543. Okay, coming over to four, I wrote down all of my trace settings I used for each color and I repeated them in SCAL 4. And guess what? Go to Path Simplify, exactly the same number of nodes. And if you compare the trace lines, they're identical. It gives the same results as long as you're using the same settings. I'll further show this, like just say with one color. Let's go back to five. And I'm going to go to the trace window now and I'm going to import the image. So let's bring it in and it's right here okay and then for single color the, the setting that I used for this particular color was 13 so I'm going to increase this up to 13 click on update preview and you'll see the number of nodes is 428 all right and you can look at these other settings I have this set at 75 20 and 0 and I'll talk about the detail later because the default is 98 but I use 20 and I'll talk about that in a minute uh, but anyway just kind of note these settings and of course that I left all of these ones right here these three I left at default because they're part of the new settings they're in scale 5 so I didn't mess with any of those so then when we come over to scale 4 and I do the same thing let's go um, let me come over here I'll turn on the original image again, the original JPEG, select it and go to the trace window and it has that same light color selected. I bring it up to 13, okay, and again I've got 75 and 20 over here in zero, same settings I used in five, and how many nodes? 428. So it gives you the same results. The only way you can greatly improve the results, again, is by changing some of the, the new settings that are here. So I didn't want anyone upgrading to version 5 based on watching that video and thinking, oh wow, I'm going to get much better tracing if I go to version 5 and I don't even have to use any of the new settings. And that's just simply not true. Um, so, you know, it, you've got to kind of understand that, you know, it wasn't magically giving better tracing results. It was giving the same thing. It's just that there's other reasons why she misunderstood the results that uh, I believe that she was seeing. Number two. You cannot expect to use the exact same settings over and over. While a contrast setting of two for a single color tracing might work for one color in one file, you shouldn't accept what you see without closer examination. And so that's going to bring me to number three. You need to decrease the show source image and zoom in so that you can get better examination of the actual cut lines that are resulting from a particular contrast. For example, if we come back to the, the value of 2 that was used in that video for this uh, original color, and you zoom in, okay, let's zoom in close, you can already see that it doesn't look very smooth. And the, another way to look at it in even greater detail is to decrease this show source image. And now then you're looking at just the cut line, that red cut line. And you can see that that's really not what you want. You can also see that it results in a large number of nodes, 3,636. So that is definitely not what you want here. Um, and so basically the way that you want to increase that is by, or I'm sorry, decrease that to get a smoother trace is by increasing the contrast setting. So, because later you don't have to do node editing unless necessary. So if you just start increasing this number up, and again what I found is that about a value of 13 gave about the best result, and you click on update preview, you see a much, much smoother trace, and that's what you want. And then you also at the same time while you're zoomed in, you want to also kind of scan around. So you just kind of scroll around and look at other parts of the image to make sure that what you're getting is a smooth trace line. 
Oh, almost forgot to mention about the detail. The detail I noted, you know, I noted earlier that I set that down to 20. If we set this back up to the uh, to the original value, which I believe was like 98 or something, it was really high. Uh, you'll see all these little specks from the trace line that show up that show up as I was increasing the contrast in order to get a smooth trace. So that's why I came in here and I decreased this down to uh, down to 20 because I said, well, I don't want any of those really tiny little specks showing up in the trace and. So so that's how I got rid of them. Number four, the purpose of the draw mask function, which is located here in under the edit mode menu, is to add or subtract to the tracing that you've received so far. Um, you don't just click on it, well, you select it, but you don't just click on it and something happens. You actually select it and then you're going to use your mouse along with uh, setting a size here to do the add or subtract. So uh, let's scroll down here and find where we had uh, kind of like some extra uh, showing. Let me update preview and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See this little point here that kind of sticks out this little line? That's something you wouldn't want. So you want to get rid of that. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. Scroll down and see it. There we can see a little bit better, maybe a little bit closer. Then uh, with draw mask selected, under mask foreground and background, foreground adds to the trace, background removes it. So you'd select on background, select a size for the, uh, for kind of like your little eraser here, and then you can just come down and you can just erase that out, just like that. Now it looks like I haven't done anything yet, but wait till I click on update preview. See, now it's gone. And you could do the same, you could do the opposite with the foreground. I could have selected that and then as I dragged, I would have added to the trace. So that's the purpose of that uh, particular function. Number five, don't forget to click on update preview so you can really see the results that you're getting. I think this is where the creator of the video ran into trouble with uh, misunderstanding what she was seeing with by using the, the value of two on every, on every layer. Um, and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna click on okay. And then yes. Now note that in this last thing that I did, I ended up with nodes of 425. Now note, note what happens when I change colors. I'm going to come back to my source image and then let's zoom out again so I can see the whole image. Um, and then I'm going to come up here, I'm going to double click and click on the next color, this, this kind of dark orange. And you'll notice that um, I have the tracing here, but you'll see that the node still says 425, so that hasn't updated. I have to actually click on update preview in order to see what the actual nodes are, 990. Also notice how this line now has shown up in here. And that's something that didn't show up when I was in that previous view. And it's also something I noticed in her video towards the end when her mouse uh, kind of hovered and this particular color was selected, I could see that line also. Now that line, you may have to, you probably would need to use this mask function again to get rid of it or, or you know, erase it later. But you don't want to miss, miss that, that fact that, that it's there. And then of course, the, again, the importance of, you know, making sure that you zoom in or that you don't I assume you can use the same settings. If you go back to two and click on update preview, then again, you still see that line and then you can see that it's rough. And when of course you zoom in, you can see that it's really rough and you need to increase the contrast so that it captures more of the pixels that are similar in color. Number six, always check carefully to make sure that what you're cropping is exactly what you want. For example, let's say I'm going to crop just the white color. So I'm gonna double click here and uh, pick the color white. And then in the video, um, the, the creator did not want this outside part trace, which makes sense. She just wanted just the, the details of the face. So when you switch on crop and then you start to um, drag these numbers up, I believe she stopped about right here roughly. And let's come down from the top and over to the left. So she was getting the face, but uh, she didn't quite notice that right here at the corner here, let's zoom in, she was still picking up. Uh, part of the background. So, you know, that's something you got to be kind of careful. You got to kind of really watch it. So really the white starts up here. So you can drag this all the way up here and get away from that, um, that outside that background part. So let's have a look, see what that looks like. Something like this. And again, let's zoom in and have a look. And see, there we just got it. Now, this is great. So when you click up Update Preview, that's the part you're going to get. And of course, you need to adjust the contrast. You can't use the same settings until you get rid of uh, that really rough uh, cut line. Uh, one other thing about this, don't forget that Draw Mask function could be used. For example, if you still have part of the background, let's just say based on the way the image was positioned, if you still have part of that background, well, then you could use the Draw Mask function and then the background to erase out whatever was being traced there. So keep that in mind as well. Number seven, 
learn the purpose of all of these settings, all the new ones that have been added in SCAL 5, as well as the standard output settings. The programmer of SCAL spent months developing, programming, testing, and debugging all of these settings, and he's anticipating these settings will be applied and not left at default values. So, you know, there's places you can find out about them. You don't have to just play around and figure out how they work. Actually, go to your resources. And I've written a 281-page uh, user manual for SCAL 5. There's also one for SCAL 4 that's just a little bit shorter. Um, but it's a free PDF that you can download from my website. And uh, in order to go there, uh, the, link, the link is ilovekk.com. And then when you get to ilovekk.com, click on support. And then you can scroll down here to the Sure Cuts A Lot 4 and 5 section, click on support page for Sure Cuts A Lot, and then you'll find a link to the SCAL 5 user manual here and one for the SCAL 4 user manual right down here. And then when you open it up, it'll take a while to load because again it's 281 pages, and you'll find that I have a you know very comprehensive, you know, uh, table of contents here where you can just click on any subject. The green video icons, they link to the Scrappy Do classroom. It's, I highly recommend it. I've just recently joined the classroom and I've done the, the tracing videos for it. But uh, Rob has been spending months and months and months developing all new videos that tie together with the user manual. And it is so worth it for those who really learn better when using a video. He has over 136 videos now and, it, and the total time is like over eight hours. So that is a lot of instruction where you can really learn all the different features and master them. Um, also, these videos, you can watch them, even though they're online, you can watch them as many times as you want to. You set up a user account and then every time you go in the account, you'll have access to all the videos. So please keep that in mind. And I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, please contact me at my email and this is my email address right here, smacaulay45 at cox.net. Again, thanks for watching.